Hello and welcome to NLP Meta Programs episode six, Motivation Direction. So this is the first of the complex meta programs. Previous episodes we went through the four basic meta programs. Now we're into the complex ones. This is an interesting one in that this uh, is a way of discerning whether somebody is more towards motivated or more away from motivated. Previous uh, meta programs, we've had more of a sliding scale um, from one extreme to the other. What we have with this first complex meta program uh, is, is similar to a sliding scale, but uh, we actually put it into five different uh, categories. So let me first explain what we mean by towards and away from motivated. So towards motivated is where somebody is motivated to get what they want. Whereas somebody who's more away from motivated are motivated to get away from what they don't want. And the, uh, the five categories that we've got here is totally towards, towards with a little bit of away from, towards away balanced, away with a little bit of towards, and then totally away from. And here's the question that we would ask to work out where somebody fitted into that scale. Uh, again, what I would do is I would um, ask this question in the context that I'm gonna wanna use the meta program. So let's put it into a business context as an example, uh, <clears throat> as far as like somebody's career or somebody's job. Then the question I'm gonna ask them is, what's important to you about your job, what's important to you about your career, what's important to you about your business. Then what I'm listening for in their language is, are they telling me the things that they want to get from their job, their career, their business? Or are they telling me the things they want to avoid in their job and their business and their career? I might ask uh, several more questions. So I go, okay, so what's important to you about your career? And they give me an example, for instance. Maybe they say uh, recognition. The next question I'm gonna ask to them is then, why is recognition important to you? And again, what I'm listening for linguistically is, do they give me negation? As in, I don't want to be, um, <clears throat> Uh, unmotivated, I don't want to be ignored, where we've got a, a, a direct negation, or are they giving me um, <coughs> comparative deletions because it's better to be recognized? If I got, it's better to be recognized as in a comparative deletion, then I would ask them the question compared to what, which would uncover the away from. But also I'm listening for um, modal operators of necessity. So, you know, why is recognition important to you? Because I have to be recognized. Meta model question again. So I get a modal operator of necessity, I have to be recognized. I'd say, so what would happen if you weren't recognized? And that's going to give me the away from that they've got there, <clears throat> yeah? Well, they go like, so what would happen if you weren't recognized? Uh, I would be dissatisfied and I would leave. So that's your away from. Or are they giving us all totally towards when we ask the question, what's important to you about? And why is that important to you? And why is that important to you? Let me give you an example. So what's important to you about your career? Recognition. And why is recognition important to you? Because it makes me feel good towards, right? <clears throat> and why is uh, being uh, is feeling good important to you? Because then I'm motivated to do a good job, all towards. So what we're listening for in the answer is what comes out first. Do we have towards that are coming out first, or do we have away from that are coming out first? Then what comes next? And then we've got a waiting. Yep, so if it's all towards, like the example I just gave you around recognition, then that person would be totally towards. Um, if, for instance, I said, what's important to you um, about your career uh, not being overlooked 
not being ignored, probably totally away from. And then what we've got is a weighting, as in do we get the same amount of towards and away froms? Do we get towards first and then a few away froms? Or do we get away from first and then a few towards? And again, it's our subjectiveness as the uh, NLP professional to put somebody on this particular scale. Now, how do we use that? <clears throat> well, here's an example in sales. We've been talking about sales examples quite a bit. Um, <clears throat> when I was first taught to sell, uh, which would have been 1990 when I bought a franchise, management consultancy franchise, then what I was taught was sell on benefits, which essentially means selling towards. But we could probably look at this as far as, you know, 50% of the population are more towards, 50% of the population are more away from. If we sell on benefits, that will work for people that are more towards, but it won't work for the people who are more away from. So <clears throat> what it enables us again to do is when we're doing a pitch, if you want to put a better word on it, doing a pitch to someone, are we best pitching benefits, as in the things that will enable them to get, or are we better off pitching the things that will enable them to ignore? So again, it enables us to fine tune what we're, what we're doing. Now, you might have also heard of motivation from uh, dangling a carrot or threatening a stick. Dangling carrots will work for people that are more towards but won't work for people who are more away from. Threatening a stick will work with people who are more away from, but it won't work for people who are more towards. So again, how we work around motivating people, influencing people to take action, when we know what the meta program is, we can fine tune it. Now, there are a number of other things which uh, are important with this meta program around what we'll see in people's behavior. Somebody who is more towards motivated will tend to perform consistently um, as long as they have goals, as in things they're moving towards. And when they get close to achieving a goal, they then set a bigger goal. So consist consistent performance, though for somebody who's more towards motivated, goals are vital, towards goals are vital. Yep. Now, somebody who's more away from motivated don't tend to need goals because, you know, the, world, the way the world is set up these days, it, the world itself gives us plenty of things to look to, to move away from. You know, I don't, I don't watch the news very often, but, you know, when I do, every single news program starts the same way. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and then they spend the next half an hour convincing me it's no such thing. Uh, because what the news does for us is tells us all the bad news, all the things we want to avoid. So people who are more away from motivated don't need carrots. The world gives them sticks. But here's what we'll notice from a, um, a performance point of view with away from. In that when the person's got a lot of things to move away from in their environment they'll be motivated. They'll be motivated to get away from this thing that they're wanting to avoid. But when they get further away from that thing that they want to avoid and they get more comfortable, their motivation disappears. So um, <clears throat> that's one of the downsides of away from motivation, inconsistent motivation. It's like boom and bust. And bust, and booming, motivation disappears, stops taking action, winds up bust again. And that's true whether it be in business, whether it be in career, whether it be in relationships, whether it be in health, any of those kind of things. You know, if we're looking at it from a health point of view, let's say that somebody wanted to lose weight because they perceived themselves to be overweight or be fat. That's away from motivation in itself lose weight. So they will take action 
And, you know, when they take action, they change what they're eating and they work out and they exercise, they're going to lose weight. Their weight's going to come down. But as soon as they get to a certain distance where they no longer consider themselves to be overweight anymore, the motivation disappears. Um, so this is something that we need to be very aware of with away from motivation is inconsistent results. If you're seeing inconsistent results, then the chances are that the person is more away from rather than towards motivated. Um, we can change this meta program. Oh, we can enable somebody to change this meta program by teaching them how to release negative emotions from events in the past, like anger and sadness and fear and hurt and guilt. That will actually have them go from being more away from motivated to being more towards motivated. But we're not done at that point in time because then what we need to do is we need to set towards goals for them because they're no longer going to be motivated with the things they're going to avoid. So they've got to have towards goals. What we also tend to find is that towards motivation, as well as being more consistent, is more uh, relaxed, it's more calm, balanced and centered, whereas away from motivation is more stressful. It's, it's kind of like a firefighting motivation. Um, it kicks in too late and it's panic and it's like, <gasps> oh, whew, save the day. No motivation again until there's a next fire to fight. So they have a very different motivational uh, profile. Uh, which, you know, makes a big difference as well, far as like whether we're, uh, how we're selling to people, how we're motivating our team, how we're motivating our employees. Here was an interesting one, um, which uh, <clears throat> one of my students actually said, David, do you think this? I'm going to leave you with this to think about. Um, do you think <clears throat> that companies in general tend to be more away from and what people unconsciously do in their job is to create an impending disaster which they then rescue the company from because one of the things about getting noticed if, if you're performing consistently you don't tend to get noticed Whereas if you save the organization from a major disaster, you get noticed and you get promoted. And this student asked me, do you think people unconsciously get that? That what they do is unconsciously they create an impending disaster in the organization, which they then rescue the organization from. They get noticed and then they get promoted. When I ran um, <clears throat> you know, that idea um, through the times when I was um, in industry in the uh, in the 1980s, because I set up my own business in 1990, then I would say <clears throat> that my perception is that that's what happens, which is a, which is an interesting one, isn't it? Anyway, hope this has been useful for you. Uh, we will have episode number uh, seven uh, next week which will be another complex motor program, which is the Reason Filter. Have a great week, and I'll see you soon.